I convinced myself that I said his name wrong, and then I stopped to look, and I'm, my brain stopped working. This episode of Switchcraft is brought to you by patrons like Dan Youster. Support Switchcraft and my other content for as little as a dollar over at patreon.com slash run, jump, stomp. Name? Patron. Thanks, Vaxerbot. File, say project as, okay. We'll say SC 140. Is this 142 or 141? feel like I already had 141, but I don't see it there. I need to look at my website. Oh, it is 141 or 142. Okay. 142. Save. You're not a bot. You're totally a bot. Here, let, let me prove it. See? Totally a bot. Uh, RJS bot says it takes one to know one, basically. Episode 142 of Switchcraft is also brought to you by OPSeat. Head on over to OPSeat.com and you can buy awesome gaming chairs there. I'm sitting on one right now. Very, very comfortable. And if you want to get $10 off, make sure that you use the coupon code RUNJUMPSIT. Again, that's OPSeat.com and the coupon code is RUNJUMPSIT. By the way, someone used my coupon code the other day, and I appreciate it. Switchcraft is recorded live three times a week at 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, whenever I can get around to it. Uh, make sure that you tune in live at twitch.tv slash run, jump, stomp. When you're there, you're going to be hanging out with some fantastic people. People like Vaxer, who is clearly a bot, uh, DJ Windrunner, A.R. Slea, uh, Joel Mead 24, Kimbalina 66, Nintendork 2012, Pudding, Soggy Kranz, and T.F. Wagner. I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me and, of course, the lurkers. Um, I don't have an email to read this week, however, or, or this episode. Um, I did have an interesting, like, I was out of town this weekend, which is why... Um, I recorded my episode 141 early and that posted on Saturday. That was my interview with the developers of um, Super One More Super One More Jump. Make sure you check that out if you haven't listened to it. It was a fun interview. Um, but, you know, I was at a conference and I had driven really far away to go to the conference and I'm sitting there um waiting after the conference was over and I was waiting for my wife to pick me up because like I brought my whole family with me and they went off to Vermont and stuff um, while I was at my conference and I was waiting for my wife to pick pick me up and there, there was this tweet from uh, Juan Cabrera uh, who had started this this conversation uh, they had included my myself as well as uh, Logan Keller and hate zero in it and they were talking about uh, that they wanted Nintendo to release a portable only Switch system uh, that didn't have a dock or a grip and uh, to reduce the price, you know, that kind of thing. And, you know, like we ended up having this whole Twitter conversation about it. And, um, you know, it got me thinking more about um, a ways that Nintendo is going to refresh the the overall uh the switch line and oh gosh i lied i do have an email um so that reminded that reminds me that i received an email from oh gosh who was it it was uh jeff gg he's a patron by the way uh he emailed me and he said um Hey, RJS, as Nintendo tries to sell 20 million Switches this year, it seems it would be smart for them to sell one without a dock for $50 less. I say this to help the price-conscious conscience parents 
who have younger kids wanting Pokemon and other kid-friendly games. Young kids don't need to dominate a TV so they can play on a Switch like they did with their, like they did with their Game Boy. Plus, it looks like a number of households will own multiple Switches, and thus, why have extra unneeded docks? And then, if a kid wants to upgrade, they can buy the dock later for $79. I don't know, taking $50 off the price could really help when trying to sell tens of millions of consoles. Uh, thanks, Jeff from Portland. All right, Jeff, well, thank you for the email, and thank you to uh, Juan Cabrera for the tweet. Um but the more that I thought about this, it's funny. I actually had the exact same thought as Jeff. Um, I think it was two, no, no, a year ago, like last January, I had this exact same thought and I made a YouTube video about it where I was talking about how Nintendo could charge less money for the Nintendo Switch and actually make more money. And uh, I'll make sure that I link that, that, um, that video in the show notes so you guys can check that out. Um, but what do you guys think? What's your overall opinion on how uh, on if Nintendo should set sell a portable only Switch? For me, I don't care what they do in that regard. What I really want to make sure that they do is make sure that the 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 whatever they do that the power is at parity or better. So if they're going to make a new console. Make sure that it's not less powerful because what will happen is developers will target that less powerful console and that means that we're going to get stuff that just isn't as good. Uh, and the reason why they would do that is because they would want it to be on both. They want it, would want it to run well on both systems. Targeting the more powerful console just isn't a great idea. Um, so as long as the there's power parity, uh, across the platform, I think that, oh, nice alliteration. I, I think that it's best for Nintendo to make sure that we get that. Um, I am curious what you guys think about that, so let me know. You can let me know by emailing me like Jeff did at runjumpstomp at gmail.com. You can tweet at me at runjumpstomp like Juan did. You can call and leave a voicemail. That's 260-RUN-JUMP, uh, 260-786-5867. And you can, of course, join the Discord and have a uh, discussion there, not just with me, but with also with a bunch of other awesome people. Kind of rambled there a little bit. Dragon Quest is coming at the end. Wait, coming to the West next year. Well, so we got a whole year to wait? I'm done thinking about it then. If only they were shipping to Canada. I'm sorry, Pudding. If you're anything like me, um, you probably played Baldur's Gate on the PC forever ago. And you probably played Baldur's Gate 2, and you probably played Icewind Dale and Icewind Dale 2, and you probably played Neverwinter, not the new MMO, but the old single-player game, although you could play that multiplayer as well. And I loved these old-school, uh, I almost want to say classic RPG-style games. Uh, these are games that very much resemble the gold box games, the Dungeons and Dragons games from way back in the day. And I had so much fun playing these games forever ago. And there was a game that came out a couple years ago now called Pillars of Eternity. And it was a return to, um, to that f style of game, which pretty much just kind of disappeared. And it was really good. It was a very, very well done game. Of course, I didn't finish it because that's what I do. I don't finish things. I get distracted. I see something shiny. And and uh, with games, there's always a new game to play. So I always have a shiny thing to, to, to distract me. Uh, but Pillars of Eternity 1 was a lot of fun. But it was, it was for the PC. 
and it was well done for the PC. Uh, I've, I've played it in the past, but Pillars of Eternity 2 is coming out on April 3rd. And why am I talking about this? Well, because it is going to be getting a port to come to the PS4, the Xbox One, and of course the Switch during this holiday season. So uh, yeah, we're not getting going to get it day and date with the PC, but it looks like we will be getting it day and date with the other consoles. And that's actually kind of a big deal. Uh, and as more as this happens more often, it's going to be very interesting to see um, how the sales numbers work out when we start getting these games that are shipping on the same day on multiple consoles. Will the Switch version hold its own? And I think that it will, especially for a game like Pillars of Eternity. This is one of those games where you definitely you want to be able to take it with you and uh, cont- pick up where you left off. Um, it's not the kind of game that's good for like short little bursts of play, but what it's great for, and, it, and it's actually kind of funny when, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of getting off on a tangent here, but I, I, if you'll allow it, I think I'll be able to bring it back around the, the mountain at the end. Um, when the switch was first announced and they showed, um, what am I thinking of? They showed breath of the wild. And I said to myself, self uh that looks awesome i'll probably only ever play this system docked because i generate this isn't the, that's not the kind of game where you play it in small little bits it's the kind of game where you sit down for a long period of time to play and true it is but it's also the kind of game that that really does well on a portable platform because you can pick up where you left off and you don't have these huge empty spots of time where you're not playing it. Uh, you can do a little bit at each time and no, you're not, you're not opening up the game and, and, you know, playing a small little snippet. You're, you may be just like, okay, I'm going to open up the game and just try and get to the bottom of this hill. And all right, now I got to do something else. And all right, I open up this game and, uh, okay, I'll try and take out that that camp of monsters and close the game after you're done because you've got something else to do. It's not something that I anticipated happening, we, especially with a big open world game like Zelda. I always would have said that these are the kind of games that you play on the couch, hooked up to the TV, and that's really the only way to play it. And the Switch totally changed my mind about that. I was wrong about that. And when I look at a game like Pillars of Eternity 2, this is the same kind of thought that I'm having, is that Pillars of Eternity 2 is this type of game where you're far more likely to press on with it if you don't have, if if you can open up the Switch and uh, jump in and maybe take a couple rounds of combat while you're waiting and then close it down and come back to it later and open it back up and maybe finish off, maybe, maybe, okay, uh, you know, my goal in this five minute window that I have to play a game, or maybe a 20 minute window is to uh, finish this floor of the dungeon or something like that. True, you're not going to be able to, the game isn't broken into bite sized things for you. But you don't need it to be because the the experience of turning the switch off and turning it back on again is so snappy because Nintendo did a great job with the operating system that I feel like these big games like this are perfect on the Switch. And I'm really looking forward to finding out this holiday season how the sales numbers uh, pan out uh, because this seems perfect for the Switch, but at the same time, there's a lot more Xboxes out there. There's a lot more PS4s out there. And the Switch is definitely has the least amount. I mean, it's only been out a year. Um, actually not even a year, but yet, but soon it'll be a year. Uh, but it'll, it'll have been out for less than two years. Whereas the PS4 and Xbox one, they've had a lot more time to build an install base. So will the portability outweigh, uh, people's desire to, to play it on their TV? I think it will. And I'm predicting that pillars of eternity two will do much better on switch than it will on PS4 and Xbox One. But then again, 
you're talking to a nerd who uh, has a, a, a Nintendo Switch podcast. So I think I'm a little um, biased. We'll find out. The video I watched could have been old. Wait, what video? Oh, you're talking about Dragon Quest? Okay. All right, let me name this. Pillars of Eternity 2. Yeah, you know what? The controls is also an interesting... That's a very... Um, mouse and keyboard well the first one was a very mouse and keyboard style game but i don't see that as being an issue with pillars of eternity uh another game that i would really like to see come to the switch oh gosh what the heck is the name of it um there's two of them uh the first one there there it's a turn based it's another game like Pillars of Eternity. Oh, damn it. I can't remember what the name of that game is. Uh, if I open up Steam, something's going to start updating, and, and that'll slow down my stream. So I'm not going to look it up. A game that's like Pillars of Eternity. It was a multiplayer game, too. It was available on PS4 as well as uh, PC. If anybody can think of it, let me know. Because that's going to bug me. It's bugging me now. You know what, let's move this. Actually, no, let's talk about this now. Pause that. Hey, mango tree. Super Mario 3D Land, A Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds, and Ultimate NES Remix are available on Nintendo DS, or 3DS, I'm sorry, for 20 bucks each. And if you, I know that I've said many times that I wish the 3DS would just go die somewhere so we could move on. So Nintendo would move on and put all of their efforts into the Switch. But it, these are three games that if you have a DS or a 3DS, I keep saying DS. Um, if you have a 3DS or a 2DS and you have don't have these three games, more more the first two than the last one. Uh, if you don't have Super Mario 3D Land and if you don't have A Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds, you are definitely missing out. Those are fantastic games. And I know that Nintendo games tend to not go on sale very often. So I wouldn't expect to, you to find them cheaper than this. 20 bucks is a steal for these two games. Um, Zelda, A Link Between Worlds absolutely blew me away. I thought it was fantastic. And it was very... It was very much a lot like Breath of the Wild in the openness of it. Like you could do any dungeon in any order that you wanted. And they had this cool thing where you were uh, renting weapons so that, you know, all you had to do is make sure that you had rupees on you and uh, you could rent the weapons that you needed in order to or the items that you needed in order to complete the dungeon that you wanted to go into. Um, if you got a 3D uh, 3DS instead of a 2D one, um, the, you know, a legend, uh, uh, link between worlds is really great in 3d. It's, it, it's locked at 60 frames per second. It looks fantastic. It was one of the only games that I played with the 3d on all the time. Uh, super Mario 3d land is really, really fun. And if you haven't played that, I highly recommend it. It's really fun. And for 20 bucks, again, these two are steals. Now, the one that I'm a little less excited for is Ultimate NES Remix. It's a lot of fun. And it's one of those games where it's nice to have it because you can play it in those short bursts. Um, but I don't know. If I had to pick between these three and, and I had to leave one of them out, I would leave out the NES Remix. It didn't really hold my attention for, for, for that long. So... Let, let's make sure that if you have a DS and you have not picked up these two games, uh, stop listening now and go buy them, okay? And uh, by the way, make sure you... Um, is this uh, digital only? Let me just click the link and make sure. 
Yeah, yeah. This is Nintendo Selects. So you can probably get these. Yeah, you can you can get it at a retailer for the same price. You can get it at GameStop, Amazon, Best Buy, Walmart, and Nintendo, or you can just buy it digitally. Uh, so make sure that you do. Yes, Vaxxer, that's it. Divinity Original Sin. That's the one that I was trying to think of. Thank you for for being my my brain. File save. <laughs> MS DOS best game. All right. Uh, what is this? Oh, this is um. Okay. Wait, did I link the wrong thing? Oh, I did. Okay. Let me clear that. Remove. There we go. Kodiak is in in the Discord, like talking about the the rocket. <laughs> All right, uh, here we go. So I guess there's some rumors that Crash Bandicoot, which uh, if you don't remember Crash Bandicoot, I mean back in the '90s, is kind of at the tail end of the mascot era, like Nintendo had a mascot they had mario and then when sega came on the scene with their uh not with their um mega drive but or not the mega drive not with the sega master system but when they brought out the mega drive slash genesis they had a, a mascot too and that was sonic and um when when playstation uh came on the scene they had a mascot too which a lot of people forgot about and that was Crash Bandicoot. And I remember distinctly uh, some of the marketing from uh, Sony and PlayStation is they would have a guy dressed up in a Crash Bandicoot outfit, uh, you know, just using a megaphone and being annoying. And it was kind of funny, especially, you know, I was a teenager. So, that, well, actually, I was probably a little less a teenager, more in my early 20s at that time. I'm not sure when the PS4 or PlayStation One came out, um, off the top of my head, but uh, you know it was it was pretty good advertising. And if you had told me that there'd be a rumor that someday we would get um, Crash Bandicoot to be uh, on a Nintendo platform, I would say you're crazy. But that's the rumor. Um, only time will tell. We're gonna have to wait. But Crash Bandicoot's not owned by Sony, it, and it was uh, actually produced by some other company. I think it was Pl Playtronics or something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but it's owned by Activision now. And Activision also owns Call of Duty. And there are rumors that Call of Duty Black Ops 4 will be coming to the Nintendo Switch. I don't know if it's true or not. Uh, I know that it's a, you know, Call of Duty games are games that a lot of people really like. I'm not one of those people. It's not, it's not really for me, but that doesn't mean I don't want it to come to the platform because I want everybody who has the platform to have a game available to them that they want. Uh, so I think it's good that we have an, that, that we may have an option for Call of Duty uh, and Crash Bandicoot to come to the switch but 
I'm a little skeptical of the rumors. We'll see. It has been confirmed by two places, Eurogamer being one of them, and they've been pretty good about uh, rumors. They don't they don't usually just make up stuff. <laughs> All right. Um file save. Well, are they going to do a good port or are they going to do what they did on the Wii cuz the Wii was a bad port from what I've been told. Okay. So Mr. Koizumi, who is the guy in charge of Super Mario Odyssey, as well as the guy who's famous for shaking the little glass of ice cubes during the Nintendo Switch reveal uh, back in last January, uh, he did uh, an interview or maybe just a, did a video where he was answering some questions and people asked two questions that were very important to people first off is toad's head part or, or the the mushroom part of his head part of his head or is it a hat and he said that it's it's not a hat so there you go uh he i uh, will leave it up to you guys as to what's going on underneath there does toad have like a huge brain or something i don't know weird um secondly why does Mario have nipples but no belly button? Uh, Mr. Koizumi said that we'll have to check and see. The <laughs> it's funny. He actually said something along the lines of, we didn't expect people to latch on to things like that. Clearly, he's never used the internet. Uh, that's all I have to say. Um, but they're going to have to revisit it in uh, later designs on whether or not they're going to give him a, a belly button. I just think it's weird that those are the questions people ask. Maybe because they cherry pick the questions that they know that they can answer and uh, put a smile on somebody's face. So weird. You know, I'm cutting that whole section. I don't need it. Since the last time I recorded, I haven't played much because I was out of town, but... What I have been playing is a lot of Dandara for the Nintendo Switch. Um, the game came out today, I think. Um, it's actually pretty good. Um, I did run into some difficulty issues and uh, make sure that you check out my full review, which I've got my full review completely recorded. It's completely edited. It's ready to render, but I had to start recording the podcast, so I couldn't render it right then. Uh, so I'm going to render it as soon as the podcast is over and I'll upload it to YouTube. Um, and I'll make sure that I include a link to it in the show notes for my full review of Dandara. Now, uh, real quick, I'll, I'll give you a quick overview. What do I think of the game? Uh, well, first off, Dandara is a Metroidvania, so it already has points in my book. I love Metroidvanias. Uh, secondly, it is, has a really cool traversal mechanic where you just kind of bounce off the walls and ceilings and stuff. And what does it play like? Well, it plays fantastically, but the difficulty is really, really high. So if you like Metroidvanias and you're looking for something unique that will really challenge you, then check it out. If you think you're going to get frustrated by a really tough game, then I would say hold off and hope that the developers give us like an easy mode or something because the game is quite frustrating. Uh, not because it's not well made, just mostly because I feel like the save points are too far away from each other. Uh, you know, I could easily get from one point to another, but by the time I get there, I'm, I'm pretty much dead. And uh, the next save point is so far away. I, I just I found it very frustrating. So maybe we'll get an update in the future, but make sure that you check out my full uh, review uh, by the link in the show notes or by just going over to youtube.com slash run jump stomp. What about Hollow Knight? 
I, I don't know putting because I haven't played uh, Call of Duty. I, I it's not my kind of game. What about Hollow Knight? TF Wagner says it was fun to watch. Oh, Hollow Knight's hard as hell. Speaking of Metroidvania games, we've got a game coming to the Switch. It's called Zeo Drifter. It is another Metroidvania game. Uh, I played this game on PC two years ago. It's one of the first games that I ever did a review for on YouTube. So I've included a link to my original review of the game from two years ago. And overall, I really liked the game. I did find that I didn't like the bosses that they put in the game. Uh, the bosses were kind of repetitive. Uh, but overall, it was really fun. It's not a long game, and it's one of those games that I actually did finish. Uh, so make sure that you check out that review. If I do get a review copy of Zeo Drifter for the Nintendo Switch, I will play it again and update my review to be, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, I guess, what am I trying to say? I'll update my review to reflect more modern times, I guess, because, you know, a lot has happened in two years. We'll see how I still feel about it. Well, that is all the time that we have for today. If there's a story that I missed or a topic that you would like discussed, please let me know. You can do so at one of the ways I mentioned at the beginning of the show. If you're looking for ways to support the show, you can easily find those by heading on over to runjumpstomp.com slash support. Uh, you'll find all kinds of links there, ways that you can uh, help the show that are free, ways that, that uh, use money. Um, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Make sure that you check out uh, Tom Winter and note block their music has been used in this show uh you can find links to their stuff in the show notes i will see you guys next time bye bye so i opened that box that has been sitting in your garage and you found my old sega genesis and nintendo 64 kimbalina that's awesome i'm jealous i would love to get more consoles to put back there even if they don't work you know like, just to have a Sega or an N64 or a TurboGrafx-16, just some other consoles sitting back there, I think that would be awesome. That's always a fun surprise. Speaking of fun surprises, you guys want to see this? This is crazy. So, um, Elder Scrolls Online is a game that I, I, I already own it on PC, and uh, I saw that it was on... Uh, PS4 and they had the collector's edition for 40 bucks. It was like a, an Amazon lightning deal or something. So I was like, uh, 40 bucks. I can't not buy that. So I bought it. Right. And it comes with this figure and I'm expecting a figure that is like this big, you know, I'm expect it's a dwarven centurion figure. I expected the figure to be about this big. This is the figure that I got. The thing that they sent me. Look at this thing. Like, I figured, oh, cool, I can put the Dwarven Centurion on the shelf in the back. But he doesn't fit on the shelf in the back. Look at how massive this thing is. It's really gorgeous, too. They did a great job on it. Um, But that's not a game that I plan on streaming anytime soon. I'm just going to be playing it on my own. Um, I'm still playing a lot of Monster Hunter. That game is amazing, but I just, like, that is so cool. Look at the detail on this thing. It's just gorgeous. Like, they did a great job. You can see all the, like, the little clockwork gears and stuff on them. But, man, just huge. You're testing them out this weekend? Hey, Kimbalina, if they don't work, like, if they're broken, don't throw them away. Send them to me. It's bigger than my head. Yeah, it is. It's bigger than my head. Because this is like right next to my head. 
Now it's even bigger than my head. All right. Well, there you go, guys. We got the show done. File. Save. Plug them in and catch the house on fire. Like, that Nintendo behind me doesn't work. You know? All right, so I have to cross my fingers and hope that Kimbalina's video game systems don't work. I'm kind of a jerk. All right, now, let's find somebody to host, because I got I gotta render this video and get it out there, and then I gotta go clean the driveway, because it has been snowing giant flakes all day. Absolutely all day. It's been just snowing like bananas. All right, let's see. Well, thanks for coming by, you guys. 